Ladies and gentlemen, we're back for another one. HSR analysis, March 7th, the like flagship character of the game. We're going to cover her today. And uh, this one, I've done a bit of a preview sneak peek myself. And this one sounds pretty interesting for a preservation, which she is. She's ice preservation. And what preservation means is essentially a defensive support slash tank. Now, let's not confuse that with thinking they are just a tank. They are more so a defensive support, at least in the case of March 7th. She's not a raw tank. She's a defensive support. So let's get into her kit. So again, standard attack is a standard attack, single target to one enemy, standard amount of damage. But her skill is where it becomes, well, the defensive support kind of role. So it provides a single ally with a shield that can absorb a certain amount of damage uh, equal to uh, a certain percentage of March 7th's defense for three turns. So she's a defense scaling character when it comes to providing her shield, which is, well, that's fine. Uh, if the ally HP is 30% of their max HP or higher, greatly increase the chance of enemies attacking that ally. Now, I find this to be an interesting mechanic, and I've kind of seen it throughout the uh, preservation uh, light cones and relics and whatnot. Not so much the relics, but the, the light cones and a few abilities. Uh, this is a bit interesting that you have increased aggro generation per se with some abilities and light cones, which I do find very interesting because you can maybe build some characters that aren't necessarily tanks into tanks if you so choose, uh, which I really appreciate actually. That's really cool. Uh, ultimate though, I also do I think is very good. Deals ice damage equal to a certain percentage of March 7th attack to all enemies. So all enemies. Uh, on a hit, the enemy has a 50% base chance to be frozen for one turn. And then while frozen, the enemy cannot move or act or do anything and will take ice damage, uh, uh, ice dot damage rather, equal to March 7th's attack at the beginning of the turn, a certain percentage, obviously. Uh, I actually like this as well. It kind of gives a variety. You can kind of go for a full tank build or you can go for like a CC dot build. Uh, just a lot of theories coming up in my head as, as the moment goes on, uh, which I do like. But a 50% base chance, that's obviously affected by enemy resistance to effects as well as your own effect hit rate. So you, that, that percentage will vary in um, in in potency essentially which is a uh, or potential for different builds but that's that her talent after a shielded ally is attacked by an enemy march 7th will immediately counter dealing a certain amount of ice damage uh, of her attack and this effect can only be triggered two times uh, per turn uh, to simplify this one it's essentially like a follow-up attack by march 7th but instead of it happening after one of your own units it's attacked this happens after an enemy unit has attacked a, a unit that has the shield that March 7th provided. So you really have to play into the fact that this has aggro generation and you have to try to make that ally be the main target. So all the units are attacking that and obviously you shield them strongly enough that they live and then they, your March 7th also does all of her follow up attacks and so on and so forth. But just to clarify, that's how that one works. And then her technique is just like the other ones. Uh, you, you start the fight and then you trigger a strong effect, which is this time it's 100% base chance to freeze an enemy for one turn. And then while frozen, they will take a bit of damage at the beginning of each turn. So it's quite generic. So, so far, so good. I actually, I actually do like the concept that the preservation tanks are going by. It's not just a, uh, a, a defense increase to all your characters or a shield give to all your characters. It's a bit more of an aggro generation kind of mechanic, which... I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Uh, as a person who's played tank in World of Warcraft, aggro generation rustles my jimmies. But moving on to the traces, March 7th skill removes one debuff from the target. Really good, actually, a purify, as the ability is actually called purify, a, a removal of a debuff. So if your characters are suffering from armor break or fucking bleed, whatever, whatever debuff they may be suffering, you just remove it, which is very simple, very straightforward. Uh, furthermore, the duration of the shield generated from a skill is extended by one turn. So instead of it being a three turn shield, it's now a four turn shield or, or, or obviously until it's completely depleted, which is actually really good. It means you don't have to care about it too much. It means that you can like focus on damage with the character or you can even multi shield if you so choose. If it gets to that point where you can actually multi shield a bunch of your characters, that's a good thing. It means more counters that you can do with her talent. Very good. And then ice spell increases the base uh, or your ultimate's base chance to freeze enemies. So this 50% turns into 65 base chance and then again still altered by your effect hit rate and enemy effect resistance, which is fine still. So far the character baseline, no Eidolons, no light codes, no nothing. Sounds fucking phenomenal. A lot of utility uh, in, in the regards of shield um, uh, application. That shield provides the character with aggro generation. Uh, the shield is based off of a defense, so it's quite streamlined. 
Uh, on top of that, the ultimate doesn't deal a, an amazing amount of damage. It's only max of 162%, which is not incredible, but it's also not bad. Uh, obviously, it has the extra dot effect as well of uh, freeze. Uh, and obviously, that's alterable, which I will recommend later on with the uh, relic builds. Uh, a, a, a build that plays to the whole dot application of freeze, because I think it actually is going to be a pretty viable playstyle in the long run. So, so far, the character is great, but obviously they are enhanced with Eidolons. Again, Eidolon 1 increases the number of times the Talon's count effect can be, oh, sorry, count er effect can be triggered each turn by one, and when the counter is triggered, deal additional damage equal to 30% of March defense. So, you can trigger it naturally with, uh, just by two times. It can be triggered two times, plus one, and also deal more damage. Pretty cool. Eidolon 2. Every time March 7th ultimate freezes a target, she generates 10 energy. I like this one. I really do. I said it in the uh, in the hook video, I believe, uh, that I like it when you have natural energy giving, not like a percentage or like a, a percentage rate increase. I like it when abilities or, or perks just give you a flat amount of energy so you know how much you're getting out of it and you know that you're getting pretty high value out of it. So 10 energy is pretty good in my in my assumption. By the way, Pride Wind doesn't really give like an energy cost on a lot of these things. I can't really see an energy cost on the ultimate. So I'm not sure how cost effective this is, but regardless, I'm assuming it's a it's a, it's a, it's a decent amount. 10 energy is a decent amount. But moving on. Uh, Idol on 3, ultimate plus 2 and basic attack plus 1, so pretty good for that. And then Idol on 4, upon entering battle, grants a shield equal to 50% of March 7th's defense plus 200 to the ally with the lowest health percentage, lasting for three turns. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, how this will work if all your characters are at max HP, it's probably going to pick the one with the lowest max HP because that's technically the lowest than HP. But again, just a shield is given out at the start of a fight, which is really good because more shields. Uh, more shields means more more survivability. Idol on five, skill plus two, as well as talent plus two. So the actual ones that you actually want to level up. I, I, I'm going to probably think that this character is going to be a bit more of a skill build. But moving on, Idol on 6, allies under the protection of the shield granted by the skill restore HP equal to 6% of their max HP plus 48 at the beginning of each turn. Pretty, pretty good. I, I'm actually going to say, probably not like, let's say the best preservation ability or whatever, but a very good survivability one. And, and obviously it's granted by your skill. So it, it, it specifies that it's not going to count when this shield is actually applied. Uh, so it's only going to really work with the skill one. But if you get into the motions of it lasting for four turns, and if you are able to apply your shield to multiple targets at a time, obviously that's going to maybe split aggro generation a bit weirdly, but if you're in a dire situation and you need survivability and you need a bit of healing, uh, this is probably going to be a good maneuver, and uh, getting C6 March 7th is probably going to be a good choice for you, uh, as it's not, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, a lot of variety, you have the tank build and you have the dot freeze build, which is the CC build, I'll call it from now on, which is, so far, the damage that you get from this character is not going to be super ridiculous, probably just going to be those two builds with the uh, the tank build as well as the CC build. Uh, now, light cones is a major thing, uh, looking at the three stars for preservation, because obviously you need a preservation light cone on this character, uh, they're both fine, really, uh, That's that, they're both fine. The Amber one, Amber over here, will give you a bit more value in your general life. Increase the defense by a flat percent, and if the wearer's HP is less than 50%, and then increase your defense by a further percentage. So that one's going to give you a bit more value in general, but the defense light cone, which is actually just called defense, uh, is going to be a nice for a, just, if, you, if it's the only one you have, really. I'm not going to even recommend this one, but it's, it's not bad, but it just gets outclassed by Amber. But four stars is where it's at. Uh, you have the, the the signature one for Mrs. Um, March 7th. I keep on forgetting her name. It's a very long name, uh, unnecessarily. Uh, but you have a day one of my new life, which increases the wearer's defense, and then after ending battle, increase the defense of all allies. This one's very good because, well, you get defense, your allies get defense, everyone's now a bit tankier. I see no problems. So this is probably going to be a great one to go for base light if you have it. Um, Landau, Landau, Landau's. I'm going to assume it's Landau's choice. The wearer is more likely to be attacked, but damage taken is reduced by a certain percentage. This is one, if you want to make the active preservation character, the tank in your group. If you want to maybe use March 7 to make another character tanky and use them as the sponge, this one is not the choice as this is going to get you aggro on March 7th. So... This one is only if you want March 7th to be the tank. But then again, it is going to give you slightly less value um, 
than this one overall because this one does provide the team-wide defense boost but this one will definitely make march 7th more tanky as this is raw damage reduction instead of a defense increase this is 24 percent damage reduction instead of a defense increase and then the last one this is me increase the words defense increase the damage uh this is this is the damage one if you want a four star one that it gives you a bit of defense, but also gives you damage. Uh, this is the one to go for, but this is not one that I'd recommend as you don't really need damage with March 7th as she's not going to be doing an incredibly large amount. So recommendation in these ones is day one of my new life for general use, Landau's choice if you want to make a March 7th specifically the tank. But five star is obviously the better choice if you want to make March 7th the best character in the game and the uh, the most defensive character in the game. Moment of victory, Gepard's Light Cone. It's probably going to be the best bang for your buck. Increase the wearer's defense by a flat percentage, and that flat percentage is chunky. And the effect hit rate by a certain percentage. Very good. These two things are baseline. And I really like that. It plays to, like, maybe Gepard's playstyle. I don't know Gepard's playstyle just yet, but it plays probably to his playstyle. But it also plays to March 7th playstyle. So they, I feel like they may have taken that into consideration when making some of these five star light cones, is to make it a bit more in line with a lot more characters than just one character so i really like that but furthermore increase the chance of the wearer to be attacked by enemy so an aggro generation uh, it will make the active character the tank so that's one thing to remember and then when the wearer is attacked increase their defense by an additional certain percentage until the end of the wearer's turn which is fine more defense really nice uh this whole one is just universally good for March 7th. There's no caveats, no drawbacks to it, apart from the fact that maybe you'll have to make March 7th the tank of the party, which is, in my, in my opinion, fine. Texture of memories. Uh, the first line is already the one that makes me not want to do it, is increase the effect rate uh, or your effect resistance by a certain percentage, which is not what we need right now. You need, we need defense boosting because obviously the defense-based character. And if the wearer is, attack, uh, is attacked and has no shield, you gain a shield. Uh, and if their wearer is attacked, when you do have a shield, the damage they receive is decreased. So it's a bit more of a situational one. It's a dependent on a few factors. Do you have a shield? Do you not have a shield? Uh, so it's, it's, it's just a bit harder to keep track of a lot of things, in at least my opinion, for the most part. Probably not in the grand scheme of things, because that sounds quite rather simple. But just in general, compared to the other one, um, just go for a moment of victory if you have it. But obviously, put this on Gepard, because I feel like, uh, unironically, even though I don't know his kit, uh, Mr. Gepard is probably going to be the better tank out of March 7th than him uh, because, well, five star in it. Uh, but that's that. Uh, if you don't have a Gepard's one, just chuck on day one of my new life. It'll be fine for you. Relic sets. This is uh, a pretty important one as well. It's pretty straightforward as well. We've, we've been going over this character and defense has always been brought up as the stat defense percentage, defense, defense, defense. Just go for the defense one. It's just, it's fine. Knight of Purity Palace defense increased by 12 and increased max damage that can be absorbed by the shield created by the wearer by 20%. It works for March 7th. She, she will have a high defense and then her shield increased by 20%, which is, and also that 12% increases the scaling of her shield. So just use Knight of the Purity Palace. It's going to be fine. You can go for Guard of Wuthering Snow. Reduce damage taken by 8%, so it's probably a bit more value than the 12% defense, uh, if I just kind of try to assume a few factors. And then at the beginning of the turn, if the wearer's HP is equal to or less than 50, restore some HP. So if you want March 7 to be specifically the tank, this is very specifically her to be the tank, this can be the good one. But I would 100% recommend Knight of Purity Palace. And then it's actually at the Planetary Ornaments that I have three recommendations. I, I, this is this is a, a pretty versatile character in terms of planetary uh, ornaments. So the first one is the defense increase by 15%, and then also when your effect hit rate is 50% or higher, which you, you kind of want to go with the effect hit rate build if you um as like substats, and then if it's at 50% or higher, you get 15% extra defense. So 30 plus percent defense extra just from a two set ornament uh, planetary ornament, which is banging. That's great. Uh, next one I'd recommend is probably the um, increase the uh, wearer's effect hit rate. So if you think you have enough defense in your other areas, you can go for two set effect hit rate, which 10% um, effect uh, hit rate increase. Then meanwhile, the wearer's attack increases by an amount that is equal to 25% of effect hit rate up to a maximum of 25%. So you gain a bit of damage uh, in line with a certain percentage of your effect hit rate, which is fine. It makes them a bit more of a damage dealer and a bit more of a dot applicator. Um, 
but it's also if you have enough defense, you will tank as well a lot. So that's the second one. And the third one is the uh, where is break effect. And weakness breaking is a big part of this game. And if you know if March seventh can solo the weakness breaking of ice weak characters with just this, then by all means go for this. So twenty percent increased effect uh, or break effect, sorry. And then when the wearer speed is one forty five or higher, more break effect uh, by uh, an extra twenty eight percent. Good. You could do kind of have to go into a, a speed build for this one, so it's a bit more um, demanding of your stats. So this one's probably going to be a bit lower on the priority list. Um, so that's that. But the one that I e easily recommend and the one that easiest to get is probably going to be the uh, Bellow Bog of the Architects, as they call it. Uh, increase the defense by 15, and then furthermore by 15 at 50% head effect hit rate. That's that's that really. Those are the ones I'd recommend. And and that's that's March 7th. Pretty straightforward, really, to be quite frank with you. A shield-based character with her skill, as well as a freeze dot applicator with her burst, that is going to provide a bit of aggro, as well as a bit of CC uh, to a specific enemy, as well as a bit of tankiness and healing, depending on what eidolons you get it at. Um, pretty, pretty good character for literally the first character that you do get, apart from your main character, the MC. Being the first character you get, not, not a bad bargain, not a bad deal to get, in my opinion. I think they'll you know, not be the best preservation character. I believe it's called preservation, right? Yeah, preservation. Uh, it's not going to be the worst preservation character in the game, but far from the worst. But then again, I don't know how many preservation characters there are, so maybe the worst, who fucking knows? But not a bad option for your build, specifically if you need an ice character. So that's been March 7th, and that's been this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one um, uh, for the next character. So have a great day. Bye.